So let's come to a comfortable seated position, sitting tall through the spine and just let the attention come to the breathing for a moment. If you could close the eyes, let the hands rest loosely in the lap. Let the shoulders fall down away from the ears and the crown of the head lift up. If you know the Ujjayi breath, narrow the passageway of air at the throat so the breath takes on a whispering quality. And let's have five breaths here. and then we'll come up to standing ready for our sun salutations. So standing near the front of the mat, let's inhale, raise the hands, stretch up high and then exhale, take a forward fold. With an inhale, lift and lengthen through the spine and exhale to Chaturanga Dandasana, elbows in. With an inhale, come to upward facing dog and exhale to downward facing dog and we'll take five breaths here let's draw the belly button in towards the spine lengthen through the arms the spine and the legs And then with the next inhale, bring the feet to the hands, lengthen out the spine and exhale, fold. Inhale, come up, stretch high and exhale to standing. Good, next one. Inhale, raise the hands. Exhale, take a forward fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen. And exhale to Chaturanga Dandasana, elbows in. Try and bring the chest forwards of the hands for a little bit more work. And then inhale to your upward facing dog and exhale. See if you can go slowly over the toes to get back to your downward facing dog. And then we'll count five slow, steady breaths here. With an inhale, bring the feet to the hands, lift and lengthen through the spine, and exhale, fold. Inhale, come up, and exhale to standing. Good, next one. Inhale, raise the hands. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen, and exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana, elbows in. Inhale, upward facing dog with the thighs off the floor, a gentle back bend if you're keeping the legs down on the floor. And exhale, draw yourself slowly back to your downward facing dog. Then with the option of raising a leg. And then inhale, feet to hands, lengthen the spine, and exhale, fold forwards. Inhale, come up, and exhale to standing. Good, next one. Inhale, raise the hands. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen. And exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale to downward facing dog. And again, let's raise... A leg raising the left leg this time, lengthen through the spine, pull the tummy in, slow steady breathing. Mm. 
And then with the inhale, bring the feet to the hands, lift and lengthen. And exhale, fold. Inhale, come up. And exhale to standing. Good, last one of these. Inhale, raise the hands. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen. And exhale to Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog for five breaths. And then inhale, bring the feet to the hands, lengthen the spine, and exhale, fold. Inhale, come up, and exhale to standing. Brilliant, let's move right along to Surya Namaskar B. So bend the knees, inhale, sweep the mat, come to chair pose, and exhale, take your forward fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen through the spine, and exhale to your Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog and exhale, downward facing dog. Then inhale, step the right foot forward, plant the left heel, reach up as you lunge down, and exhale back to Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog, and exhale, downward facing dog. With the inhale, step your left foot forward, right heel drops, and reach up. Exhale, come back to Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog, low shoulders. And exhale, downward facing dog, five breaths. With your next inhale, bring the feet to the hands, lengthen that spine, and exhale, fold until you feel that stretch through the hamstrings. Then bend the knees, inhale, lift up the hands, so the biceps are beside the ears, and then exhale to straighten it. Brilliant, next one, inhale, chair pose. Exhale, take your forward fold, stretch into the hamstrings. Inhale, draw that spine out to its fullest length, and then exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. And inhale, right foot forward, left foot flat, warrior. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, left foot forward, right foot flat, warrior. And exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog for five breaths. So we're really trying to make these movements very smooth and flowing, especially if you're very familiar with them. We can get a little bit complacent, but there's always work to do. So we're really trying to make every transition smooth and under control. Every placement of the hands and the feet perfect. So putting the feet and the hands exactly in the right position they need to be for your next pose. So you don't have to shuffle them around. So with your next inhale, feet to hands, halfway up, long back, and exhale, fold, hamstring stretch, bend your knees, inhale, lift the hands, and exhale, straighten. Great, third one, inhale, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen the spine, and exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, step that right foot forward, stepping as quietly as you can on the mat. Exhale, come back to Chaturanga Dandasana. Remember, you can work harder by bringing the chest further forwards. Inhale, upward facing dog, and exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, left foot forward, right foot flat, warrior. 
exhale back to Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog and exhale, downward facing dog for five breaths. So go ahead and raise the right leg, bend the knee, drop the foot over behind you, turn into a twist. Lift the kneecap on that standing leg. So you're working the quad muscle. Try and draw the hips and the ribs away from one another so the middle body lengthens. And then inhale, bring the feet to the hands, lengthen that spine and exhale, fold. Bend your knees, inhale, lift the hands and exhale, straighten. Good, next one, inhale, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, right foot forward, left foot flat. Warrior. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, left foot forward, right foot flat. Warrior. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Five breaths. Raising the left leg, bend the knee, drop the foot over. Press equally into both hands. Turn into that twist. With an inhale, bring those feet to the hands, lengthen out the spine. Exhale, fold. Bend your knees. Inhale, lift the hands and exhale, straighten up. Then our last one, inhale, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, right foot forward, left foot flat, warrior. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, left foot forward, right foot flat, warrior. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog for five breaths. Well done. Draw those shoulders back away from the ears, the opposite of a shrug. And then inhale, feet to hands, halfway up, long back. Exhale, fold, bend the knees. Inhale, lift the hands and exhale, straighten up. Good stuff. So let's go right on to some standing forward bends. So we'll take a stretch up with the hands first of all and then come over. So just finding whichever stretch into the hamstrings works for you. Hands could hold onto the elbows, anywhere along the legs or onto the big toes. Or for a bit of variation, you could bring the hands around under the heels. So just trying to get the forearms coming down behind the calf muscles and you're cradling the heels in your fingers. So you're standing on those fingers. Might draw you down a little bit further into your standing forward bend. You can bend your knees for any of these. Next variation is to tuck the hands under the fronts of the feet. So the toes tickle the inside of the wrists. And then we'll 
we'll step off those hands, roll ourselves up to standing, shake anything that needs a little shake. So you can either repeat those standing four bends again, or if you're doing the bird of paradise as part of your practice, then come back down, maybe with a slightly wider stance, bringing the left arm through the gap and turning that shoulder over in each socket so that when you bend the elbow, the hand comes around behind you and you might be able to clasp the fingers. If you can, you could just begin to explore what it might be like to stand up straight and then maybe to extend the leg. So you can have a little try on the other side. So you don't have to stand up. So the first part is simply to try and find the bind. And it's quite fun just to hang out down here, getting a different stretch through the right shoulder as it tucks under that leg and then looks for the bind with the fingers. Good, so wherever you are, just release and just take a little wiggle, a little sway and then roll ourselves up to standing. And we just have a go at some external rotations of the hip with standing forward bends uh, as some options. So first of all, we'll just come to treat. So staying upright for this first one. So weight is on the right foot. We're just turning that left knee out to the side. So external rotation of the hip. And then that foot's either coming against the calf muscle or against the thigh muscle. Hands can come together at the center of the chest or they can raise up. So we'll just take five breaths here. So when you're done, we can just take that one on the other side. So the left foot becomes the standing leg and the right foot is coming up. Good stuff. So for the next one of these, we're just going to have a go at crossing the ankle in front of the standing leg. So the knee, just above the knee there. So right leg is the standing leg and we're just bending that standing leg. So we're coming into a single legged squat. This bit is flexing and the left knee falling out to the side and try to tuck the tailbone underneath as well. And we'll slowly release. It's death, so we'll try that on the other side as well. So left leg is the standing one. Ankle foot comes across, flexing. And we're just seeing how low we want to come in that squat. Take the tailbone underneath you, pull the tummy in. and then releasing and then for the last one of these if you want to you can have a go at the half lotus with or without standing forward bend so weight on the right foot we're closing this knee joint totally and we're bringing this heel up towards the hip bone of the standing leg and then drawing the body out nice and long we're just seeing whether we might fold over that foot now if you don't want to fold down that's fine, you can stay standing up in this half lotus position. Uh, 
and then when you're ready you can bend this standing leg to come up and then have a little go on the other side so left leg is the standing one and we're just bringing that right leg up bending it so this knee joint is totally closed and then carefully bringing that hip across into the external rotated position and it's heel close by the other hip so again you're welcome to stay standing tall that's fine we've still got the balance and the external rotation of the hip but if you want to you can explore lengthening the body trying to lift the rib cage over the foot really and just bring the hands down to the floor. And then we can bend that standing leg a little bit to carefully come back up put the foot down and give the legs a little bit of a shake all right good stuff so let's take some wide leg standing forward bend so stepping out wide toes pointing forwards we'll inhale raise the hands and exhale come forward so these hands can be flat on the floor as far out in front as you need or if you've been practicing a while you might be able to bring them back in line with the feet if you're banging your head on the floor, if you can fold down that far, then just bring the legs a little closer together so you've still got somewhere to go in this stretch. And try and shift the weight so it's not just in the heels, you're using the whole foot. Pull the tummy and lengthen through the spine. You can push the hands in the floor, squeeze the elbows together. And then with your next inhale, as if you're filling with helium and floating up, we'll stretch the hands high. And then as you exhale, bring them onto the hips. Inhale, lift up the chest and exhale, come forward. So you'll feel those hip bones fall down towards the thighs. Let the spine be strong and straight. So hold it out using its own strength. Don't let it just flop and collapse like that. Hold it out straight and draw the head and the neck out from the shoulders. So the shoulders stay back away from the ears. Good, with the next inhale, we'll float up, stretch the hands high, and then bring them behind you now. You can either interlace the fingers or hold on to the forearms. Squeeze the shoulder blades in towards one another as you lift the chest on an inhale. And then we'll slowly come over. Shoulders might twizzle in their sockets. Arms might draw away from the back. Slow, steady breathing. Yeah, then with your next inhale, draw yourself up, stretch the hands up high and exhale, hands onto the fronts of the thighs. We'll inhale, lift up the chest and exhale, come forward. So this time the hands just slide down wherever they get to. So holding on. You might resist a little bit with the upper body and pull against that resistance with the arms. So just using the muscles here. And then you can either stay here or we can have a little go at the twist. So you just need to cross the arms so that they can, the hands can hold on to the opposite ankle. So you might need to bring those feet a little narrower. And if you can just do this so the left arm is the one that's in front, then we can start by turning to the right. So rotating clockwise and see if you can look out underneath that left arm. And then we can just come back to the middle, cross the right arm in front, and then turn to the left hand anti-clockwise. 
and look out under the right arm. And then turn back to the middle and we'll just see if we can send those feet out towards the ends of the mat. You might want to come down onto the elbows to do that or you might not. So just a little stretch through the insides of the thighs. And then we can heel toe those feet in draw ourselves up and hop back to the front of the mat. Good stuff. So let's stretch the hands up, exhale, come to a forward fold. So wiggling your way right down into those hamstrings and then we'll shift the weight onto the right foot and float the left leg up high whilst we fold our upper body down over that standing leg. And we'll have a go at moving into a half moon balance. So with the right hand on a block or maybe just up on the fingertips, we're going to have a go at turning the body out to the left side and stretching the left hand up. Now, if you want a little challenge, have a go at bending this knee of the lifted leg. See if you can find that big toe and then just gently kick that foot into the hand for an extra stretch. And then just gently releasing, we'll come into the revolving version. So bringing the left hand down and opening to the right, the right hand reaches up. And then we'll come down just to another standing forward bed, stretching here. And then bringing the weight onto the left foot, we'll float that right leg up high. Half moon balance then with the left hand underneath the left shoulder and the body turns out to the right side. And then maybe you could have a go at bending that top leg, finding the big toe and carefully kicking up into the hand. And then coming into the revolving version, so the right hand comes down, the leg keeps lifting, but we turn to twist to the left. Good job. So we'll just come down, we'll take a little rest in child's pose for a moment. And it's time for our plank challenge. So eight breaths in side plank, in middle plank, and in side plank on the other side. So in your own time, just remember you're welcome to do a plank on elbows or on straight arms. But just stay nice and strong and straight all through the body and through the limbs. Okay, so let's make a start. You can count your own eight breaths. 
but don't make them too speedy. And when you're done, just make your way back to child's pose again, sitting back onto the heels. And then we'll roll ourselves up, pass the feet around. We'll come to a seated forward bend. So inhale, raise the hands, exhale, angle forwards, walk onto the front parts of the sitting bones, pull the tummy in, hold the arms and the body into a single straight line. Then we'll bring those hands down, have a little go at a lift. And release, good stuff. Let's bring the soles of the feet together for Baddha Just let those knees fall out to the side. Great stuff. So let's just extend our right leg here and we'll come to either seated tree with this left knee falling out to the side and the foot just resting against the inside of the straight leg or half lotus. So you could, keeping this knee joint nice and closed, bring that heel up onto the hip bone. So from here, you might add a little bit of a forward lean. So whether you chose the seated tree or the half lotus option, you could start to roll onto the front parts of the sitting bones and go forward with a nice straight spine. So the last couple of weeks we've been looking at the Mary Chasana sequence. Um, so from here we're just going to come straight into Mary Chasana B. So if you've got the foot on the floor for seated tree, just leave it like that. But if you've gone for the half lotus, then also leave the foot up here where it is. We're going to get this straight leg and bend it up and shift onto the front part of the sitting bone. Now, if you're in half lotus, that should bring this lotus leg so that the knee is resting on the floor here. And then we try to come into a forward lean and see if we can lean past 
that right knee. We can extend the arm and see if we can catch that knee into the armpit as the arm bends around behind us. And then we might catch the fingers and hold them together. Now, if you were in seated tree before, this foot should just be resting on the ground behind the other one. Good stuff. So let's just come out of the bind if you took it. And then we'll just let this left leg, the lotus or the half, uh, the seated tree leg, come out straight. And we'll have a go at Marichasana. See, so that's the one with the twist. Now, if you want to do the gentle twist, the modification, that's totally fine. So we've got this right knee bent up still. And we're just going to turn in towards that leg. Give a little hug with the opposite arm. And turn around into the twist. See if you can nudge this shoulder back and look out over the shoulder but if you want to go for that bind then you need to get this armpit close to the knee so you need to sort of try and sit up very close to that knee and again catch the armpit into the knee and bring the hands around behind you for the bind trying to sit up tall and then turn into the twist and then we'll just gently release so we'll let that leg slide out for a moment give both legs a little wiggle and then we'll bring this foot back either into seated tree or into half lotus so then this left leg is going to be the one that's bent so Bend it up, foot flat on the floor, and we can come onto the front part of the sitting bone and see if we can rest this knee on the floor. Now, if you were in seated tree, this foot, instead of being up in between the leg and the body, it will just be down on the mat beside the heel here. So we're coming forward. We're seeing if we can extend that arm, turn it over in its socket so the shoulder rotates around, and then maybe when the hand comes around behind the back, it can meet the fingers of the other hand. So try not to curl up too much. We're thinking of drawing the body out so the nose is kind of moving along the mat rather than curling close to the body. And then we can gently release. So just let that seated tree or half lotus leg come out straight. And we'll have a go at Marichasana C, the twist. So either just turning in, giving a little hug, or turning that shoulder all the way over in its socket and seeing if you can catch the top of the knee into the armpit and bend the arm around behind you and catch the fingers together. Then we're trying to sit up tall all the way through the body and turn into the twist. Good, so let's just gently make our way out we'll give the legs a little wiggle and the shoulders a little wiggle and then we'll come down for some back bends so bending the knees up towards the ceiling we'll just carefully lower the back down plant the feet into the floor and then we can just press through the feet so the legs feel strong and begin to peel the spine away from the floor and the hands might come underneath the rib cage Uh, 
good. So we can just gently release, hug the knees into the chest. We'll take one more of those. That might be a bigger back bend or a littler, gentler one. Just see what your body's asking for. And then gently releasing, we can hug those knees into the chest, wrap the arms around, bring the chin up to the knees, so we're curled up into a little ball. And then from here, we'll let the upper body rest back down on the mat and we'll float the legs into the air. Now you might want to stay here in a gentle inversion. You could allow the arms to come over the head and just think about the whole spine being in contact with the ground. But if you have a shoulder stand, you might want to roll the hips up away from the mat and walk the hands down either side of the spine in the direction of the shoulder blades. And then you're trying to tuck those shoulders underneath you and draw the elbows in close towards one another so that the body tries to get up into a vertical line. It's something I've been working on for many years. It's not there particularly well. Uh, I think it's just some people can do it very easily and others can't. So anyway, wherever you fancy being, let's just hang out in an inversion, whether it's a gentle one with the spine on the floor or a shoulder stand, just have a little go. Obviously, just be mindful of your surroundings. And then when you're ready, just begin to roll yourself down. Might feel nice to hug yourself into a little ball again. And then we can just open out onto the mat into Shavasana. So you might take that lying flat on your back, arms and legs straight and away from the midline. You can lie like this with the soles of the feet together, knees out to the side, or like this with the feet on the floor, knees resting together. It doesn't really matter, we're just looking for a comfortable posture. So let the breath soften. Check there's no holding going on in the body. We can just let everything soften and give the full weight of the body into the floor. And follow the breaths in and out of the body. and staying in Shavasana as long as you would like. 